Hi, I'm Francisco Scolano. I'm going to introduce the, the paper, The Entropy of uh, Graph Embeddings as a Proxy of uh, Potential Mobility in, 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 in COVID Outbreaks. So this work is in collaboration with the um, University of Alicante and the University of York. Well, the contents are uh, as follows. So first, a motivation. So, so uh, uh, this work is, is part of a of a team called uh, the COVID-19 Data Science Task Force, which is uh, was developed by the uh, region of uh, the government of a region of Spain, which is uh, the Comunidad Valenciana. So the idea is to, well, we analyze the mobility graphs uh, because they they play a, a fundamental role in in the spread of the of the disease, and we found that well, if we embed these graphs and and we uh, calculate some measure of complexity of these embeddings, then we can we can find a proxy uh, or early warning of the reproduction number of the disease. This is basically the content of, of this uh, of this paper. Well, first the motivation and well the COVID nineteen data science task force is a set of uh, uh, twenty scientists which are uh, collaborating in different areas like a mobile data analysis or epidemiological models or predicting models and citizen science. The idea is to gather information and 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 to make accurate predictions to this uh, for the spread of the COVID-19 in, in here in Spain and in Valencia and also to uh, well, to explore um, different uh, methods of early warnings and to extend the predictions not only to to the cases but to the how how is the mm, mm, the how good is the system to hold uh, uh, all the cases which are uh, appearing that is what how how robust how how uh, how, uh, how are the resources of the of the system uh, compromise for that uh, for that cause well so so in this case we we for prediction we use a stochastic sail model a stochastic sail model is it's just a, com a classic compartmental model it's not the unique choice but it works um, pretty well locally because well you have a set set well different states uh, susceptible people then you can uh, from susceptible you 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 pass to exposed people and then to infected people and then to recover people well this the the change of state is driven by a differential equation and here we have a stochastic model um, for these differential equations and uh, with basically uh, x uh, y and z uh, are coming from uh, binomial distributions and x is coming it depends on the rate uh, beta is the rate of the of the disease is related to the reproduction number uh, uh, r0 and has sigma and gamma uh, we estimate all the, all these 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 parameters and uh, well, I calculate them because, in a sense, R zero beta uh, can be seen as a control parameter. So if we apply a non-pharmaceutical intervention like closing schools or any other thing, so this has an impact on R zero, and, and R zero has to be keep kept before be below one, so that we contain the, the, the pandemic. Well, the, in this in this model we introduce the mobility in terms of how many people is moving from what we call one patch which is a census block group this is this is created by the national institute of statistics and we have uh, anonymized data of, of, of um, cell phones companies um, so we, we know in aggregated form how many people is moving from uh, one uh, uh, cbg to another one so we can we can see how many uh, infected people is moving, uh, or the rate of infected people is moving, or susceptible people is moving. So with that, we can we can create a model, a Sayer model, which is uh, illustrated here. Well, we, we quite uh, predicts quite well what is happening in the uh, in the community. Uh, 
Well, part of, of the of the scientists which are involved in this in, in this process um, are working with uh, analyzing the mobility graph. What is the mobility graph? Well, we, we have how many people is moving from one census block to another one, and each day, and uh, different uh, different moments of the day. And uh, we illustrate here, uh, we can analyze this graph. This is typically an undirected graph, a directed graph, so a D graph. So we cannot uh, use uh, tools for analyzing um, undirected graphs in this case. But here we can, we have made some studies like uh, if com uh, communities are stable or not, because when you apply, we, when we apply a restriction of mobility, uh, essentially what we move we do is to disconnect the graph and he has this has an impact into the uh, into the disease spread it is what we expect to do so the idea is how to minimize the number of interventions uh, uh, without you know impacting too much uh, at the same time uh, well the impact is is good but not impacting too much in the economy so well uh, our mobility graph is created as follows: is a weighted graph where we, uh, well, we normalize the number of movers from one uh, census block to another census block, and if this have an edge, we have an edge between y and j. If this uh, if this uh, normalization is is uh, in non zero, and we weight this this by the what we uh, what is called typically the rad radiation model what is the radiation model the radiation model uh, typically takes into account if you want if you are going from y to j take into account the populations of the of the locations placed between y and j which is uh, s y j for instance which is how uh, what are the populations in, in a given radius around y so the the idea is that if we weigh that uh, what happens with uh, the mobility graph is that the weights are smoothed, so we can use more uh, more robust in a more robust way to to make predictions. Uh, okay, so the idea is to embed the graphs and how we do uh, how we embed the graphs. We cannot uh, use the, the spectral uh, usual spectral embeddings, uh, so we resort well, well, we 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 use uh, embeddings. Uh, which are typically uh, obtained from bunches of, of random walks. We have a population of random walks. And we take a statistics of the co-occurrences of the pair of one, one node and the other node, uh, given a context size uh, T. And after that, uh, this is what it, uh, is done in the state of the art. This, this, the, the embedding is just the factorization, the SVD factorization of the, what they call the, the co-occurrence matrix. Well, so so this is, is was proposed later uh, well, recently uh, by Levy and Goldberg and and, and summarized uh, by Q at all in uh, two years ago. Well, the basic idea of, of these embeddings is that if I am in in this uh, world, so in one step of the random walk I get the blue nodes, in two steps I get the green nodes, and in three steps I get the orange nodes, and so on. So the idea is that well, I can I can take many random walks and uh, for starting for different uh, nodes and take a statistics of these random walks. Well, the, the idea is, is, this, is to preserve with this, this uh, approach, is to preserve uh, the, structural, uh, the structure of the, of the original graph. Well, the neural why neural is because uh, what we want to do with the backs, back of paths of, of a given length is to maximize, uh, is to find, uh, to maximize uh, given a node uh, y, uh, w, uh, i, what is the context? Well, to maximize, uh, well, if, if two nodes appear frequently, uh, they belong to the same context. And this means that if I I can predict that uh, from W Y I cannot uh, I will find frequently uh, C uh, J. So this this leads to a loss function, uh, so loss function which is uh, well I have a link if I have a correlation between 
uh, the embedding of of, uh, uh, of y naught, which is x, and the embedding of the j naught, which is y. Okay, this is uh, it's called typically the word to vec approach, and there's many flavors like the word called line, uh, uh, which later on are, are taken from the natural language literature and incorporated to the vector to, to the, the graph literature, which is a node to vec, roll to vec, structure, struct to vec, and many others. So I, I have uh, an input vector, which is the location of one node of my graph. The output of the network will be. Uh, how many, uh, what nodes are in the same context statistically of this node. Um, the ways of the embedding in this case is the first, the, are the ways of the, between the input and the first layer, and the first uh, hidden layer, which is the number of neurons is the number of the dimensions the, uh, of the embedding. Well, so uh, this approach, this neural approach has been uh, proven to, to be equivalent to uh, make a factorization of a, a, a matrix called the pointwise mutual information matrix, which essentially uh, encodes uh, the number of, uh, of times that uh, a node appears with the contextual nodes uh, divided by the, the marginal of the, uh, the, the appearance of, uh, of this node and the contextual nodes. And Essentially, Q at all so, uh, proof that this matrix is, is uh, basically related to uh, the matrix S, which is uh, the average uh, of the P1, P2, P, uh, P2 to the power 3, and so on, which where P is the transition matrix. In other words, the embedding, what we're doing with the embedding, is uh, is just computing the, the the transition matrix, the powers of the transition matrix, and average them, and then wait this this uh, this matrix, this average by the inverse of the degree. Well, with this this uh, development at hand, uh, well, we 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 have an, the following analysis: this matrix can be also seen, matrix S, can be also seen as the expectation of the concurrence matrix O, where each entry contains the number of times nodes Y and J are co-visit uh, within a window size uh, T. While the, the expression of this ex expectation is, 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 is below, and here, well, this relationship between S and the expectation is clear if we take into account that uh, this probability of the context of, of hitting the contextual word from the root uh, node is one divided by t, and making that the the probability the, the starting probability uh, well probability of starting the the at, at each node is inverse to the degree uh, of this node. Well, basically, this lets us for what we call the rank hypothesis. What is the rank hypothesis? is that the rank of the transition matrix, which is P, is critical. And this is strictly related, uh, strictly, uh, and for strictly related, uh, directed graphs, like the mobility ones, it achieves the largest ranks. You can see the details in the paper. We analyze several uh, types of graphs and, and in the paper. Thus, the rank of, of the expectation is a proxy of the graph complexity. In what sense? Well, low complexity arises when the rank uh, is, uh, is, 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 is small, because the rank is determining the number of independent superspaces in the concurrence matrix. The small rank indicated that the heating patterns of the random walks are highly redundant. They, they collapse in a small number of clusters. Uh, this uh, typically uh, will happen uh, when there are, there are some restrictions of mobility. A high complexity, when the rank is large, it ideally close to n, concurrence um, patterns are linear independent because the random walks are less constrained. Uh, the graph, uh, well, the, the deficiency of, of, of information transmission in the graph or uh, the or information diffusion is, 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 is larger with, with, uh, when the rank is large. Then the absence of bottlenecks that is the relax. Uh, if you relax the mobility uh, measures, it uh, favors the transport, the transport efficiency, and also the spread of the disease. 
Well, to, to test that hypothesis, where we compute the entropy of an embedding, not only the rank. Why? Because the rank estimation can be shadowed by numerical errors. Well, what we do is, uh, we, 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 is instead of, of using the rank, which typically overestimates the number of co-occurrence clusters, we compute the bypass entropy of the embedding. That is, we get the embedding, each, uh, each, uh, the embe uh, each uh, row of E is, an, is the embedding of a node to the graph, and then uh, we normalize this, this, uh, this row and we compute the bypass entropy, which is basically we construct the, um, the KN graph uh, of all the points in the embedding and, and we measure the, the so-called Renji entropy, which is basically this expression and using alpha 90, uh, 0 0.99 and an L is the, the cost of the, this uh, KNN graph. Well, what we find with, after doing that is that the relationship between the, the reproduction number and the entropy is given by a simple equation. That is, the, the, the reproduction number is proportional to the square of the, of the range of entropy. So, well, it, we know that R0 can be usually seen as a control parameter. So it reflects the impact of the NPI non-pharmaceutical intervention, such as constraint in mobility. So we see that there's, there's a, a high correlation between uh, the entropy and the, uh, the R0, which is the, um, the reproduction number. And in the beginning, this is March 15, we have no implemented no pharmaceutical intervention. And after that, we close some sectors of the economy and and the entropy and the R zero drop uh, significantly. The, uh, you can see that here, and where each of the of the milestones, like school closing and non-critical lockdowns, and um, working uh, after, for instance, the working reopening, we observe a, a increment of the mobility uh, and thus an increment of the complexity of the graph and all the connections uh, which are cut are, are restored and this anticipates what is happening what is going to happen in the next week and, and uh, like and where after we reopen more and more things the entropy is it grows is, is growing well as conclusion what we, we have done in this paper is to embed the complexity uh, uh, well, to, to make the, the complexity of embedding as a proxy of or R0. And for doing that, we have to look at the concurrence matrix and relate its, the, the, the expected concurrence matrix and relate its rank to the complexity of the graph. And uh, we estimate this, not this rank, but the complexity of, of the graph via uh, by bypass entropy. And well, for the future, we know that we are limited to, to, to predictions for a local region of Spain. And while the predictions are, are good, we have to test this model in the following ways of the pandemic. So for that, we are getting new data, with the mobility data uh, from other, uh, other um, uh, official um, institutions of, of the Spanish government. And in addition, uh, the SAIR model is not the only possibility we are testing. For instance, we are we are we, we created a, a data driven uh, net, uh, neural net that predicts uh, quite well in in more in close to three hundred uh, regions of the world. Uh, is, this is in the context of the in the express challenge called the pandemic response. So we we are we are going to introduce the mobility. Uh, in this, uh, in the future, in this model, and to study what is the impact uh, of of, uh, of of the entropy. Well, thank you for your attention, and if you have any any question, uh, just uh, write me to, to the, this email, and I will to thank all, all this uh, organization which uh, found part of this research developed for uh, for the. Mm, mm, the COVID-19 data task force. Thank you very much.